Next, we go one-on-one -on -one with State Treasurer Dan Rutherford, the director of the Mitt Romney campaign in Illinois. As one who knows both Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama on a personal level, we'll hear how he contrasts the two men and why he's supporting Mitt Romney for the Republican presidential nomination. This runs about 20 minutes. Illinois State Treasurer Dan Rutherford, thanks for joining us again on the Illinois Channel. It's good to be back on the Illinois Channel, Terry. Thank you. For the viewers' uh, purposes, we'll let them know that we're going to be talking today not so much about state finances as much as taking a look at the presidential campaign. And the reason we're talking to you is you represent, uh, you are Mitt Romney's representative, uh, in Illinois, and what is your actual title if you chairman. have one? Sure. Yeah, I'm the chairman of the uh, Romney campaign here in the state of Illinois. I got to know the governor, uh, Governor Romney, five, about five years ago, um, and the first time we really sat down to chat was in Boston in his office. Um, he had, uh, through some mutual relationships, suggested that maybe he would like to talk to me and I would like to talk to him. We sat down in his office, got to know him. He knew about my background here in the state at that time, Terry, I was a state senator, and um, as we got to know each other better, he asked me if I would chair his campaign here in Illinois four years ago. I did it, and in doing that, I got to meet his wife, spent a lot of time with Ann, Josh, Matt, uh, Tag, Craig, his sons. I uh, got to know them. We ran, and he didn't get the nomination four years ago. But the beauty of what I've learned about Mitt Romney is just a caring kind of guy. He has a wonderful family. And we've had the chance to spend a lot of time over these past four years. He's been in Illinois. He's done political fundraisers for me. I've done political fundraisers for him. I've been with his family. And when the time came to start to put together this 2012 bid, uh, Governor Romney asked me if I would chair his campaign again in Illinois. And I said, absolutely. I felt he was the right guy, and I'm glad to have done it. So, again, for our viewers' purposes, we're taping this today after the Iowa caucus. And uh, uh, landslide Romney won by eight votes. <laughs> <laughs> he did, and I actually had, I was on a conference call with Mitt uh, the day before, uh, on the Monday, the caucus was on Tuesday, I, had a, I was on a conference call with him and, and some of our leadership around the country, and he was pretty clear about it, that he felt good about Iowa, but that the definition of success would have been coming in first, second, or third. Coming in third would have been a good position for him, considering where he had been in Iowa, as far as not having been in there as early as the other candidates, and that would have been a good springboard to go on to New Hampshire. But uh, coming in first, even by eight votes, uh, is is better than coming in third. Yeah, it, I, th I think it would have to be said that it's probably one of the more interesting Iowa caucus elections in the last 40 years. You know, and it's one thing I've got to say, that, and, and again, I, I know Governor Romney reasonably well. I spent a lot of time with him. We've been on planes together. We've been in private times in cars to go into meetings and stuff together. Um, he, the guy is unbelievably organized. I mean, he has a thought process, and I think this came, came through in his days in business, how he was successful there and how he helped change the Salt Lake City Olympics from a, from a, a, a major debted operation to one that actually turned into be a successful one financially. Um, so I, the idea of how he dealt with Iowa and to have the meticulous structure in place for those, what, 1,700 precincts, whatever it was, and, and do it and win. I mean, eight votes out of thousands and thousands and thousands cast is not a lot, but the fact it is you did it. And I think that goes a lot to, to, to uh, about him and how he would run, how he'd run the country. We'll cover some of the other things that have been said about him, but I'll, I, I want to offer something new. And so I want to get into some mechanics, but before we do that, let me just mine that a little further. Your background has been in business. Right. Your people may not know, but you're a pretty organized guy. <laughs> that is the nice way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you're very energetic. So for you to be impressed by Governor Romney, I think, says something. And people are going to be asking, well, who should I vote for? Mm -hmm. Relative to what you know, and you just touched on it somewhat, but why should people vote for Mitt Romney? Because a lot of Republicans, as you know, are really torn. They don't know which way to go. You know, I, Terry, I think that the reason the Republicans that you see in the polls and so forth like that are torn about Governor Romney may well be because of specific areas of belief that they have they want in their candidate. And whether it's on this specific social issue or that social issue or position on this or that, 
I mean, the reality to it is there is no perfect candidate. The only perfect candidate out there is you yourself, and you may not even agree with yourself all the time in that. So I think that's where Governor Romney is right now. But you will see that the, he is consistent in the bandwidth that he has carried in regards to that support. It is, if it's wavered by half a point, that's, a, that's, that's all it's wavered. What I'm sensing is going to happen, though, as we move off of New Hampshire and moving towards South Carolina, Florida, Super Tuesday, eventually here in Illinois, that you're going to find people that are going to start to say, okay, you know, the one that I wanted to have because I believe that they believe in this with me may not be there now. And so I want the one that's going to be best for my brother-in-law who doesn't have a job, my mom who's got to be concerned about her health care, uh, my, my student my kid that's going to college right now, will they be able to have a job? Right now, the most important thing I think that the American public is focused on and will totally laser beam in on when it comes time to elect the President of the United States is going to be the economy and jobs. And right here in the state of Illinois, where we are suffering a 10% unemployment rate, in the home state of the current President, I think will cause people to resonate to Mitt Romney. And we all have our warts. And maybe there's something they don't like about him, but overall, he will be the better man to lead this nation. And I think that they're going to come to that conclusion. There's two elections uh, for president relative to Illinois voters. One obviously will be next November. A lot of people think, well, Barack Obama will carry Illinois, so my vote's not going to count. But whatever one would say about that being true or not, the other... And I'll have a discussion with you on that when we get towards November. Well, and the, <laughs> uh, we'll do that. But the other, the other issue is going to be, uh, obviously, winning the nomination. Let's talk about what, what do the candidates in the Republican presidential primary have to do to win the delegates here in Illinois? Sure. And, and let's um, <clears throat> let me just fast forward a bit. In August, uh, the national convention will be in Tampa, Florida and the requisite number of delegates, and I may be off by 100 or so, but it's like 2,600 delegates, then you need the majority of those. And the process that you go through is each state has a different means to do it, some of them by caucus, some by um, uh, the, the primary election, those kind of things. Illinois is March 20th. Illinois will have 54 delegates elected. Now, there's a few others that are super delegates and you know stuff like that, about 10 of those. But Illinois will elect 54 delegates and 54 alternates. They are broken out within the 18 congressional districts. So if you're a stronger Republican congressional district, you may have four candidates. A one that's high, a higher density Democratic may only have two. But the game, and I mean this in the political process way. The, the process. Game, the process is you have to get those candidates to be on the ballot to even be considered in March. This week that we're taping this, is the week that I actually, the morning of the Iowa caucus, went to the State Board of Elections right here in Springfield at 8 a.m. to turn in the petitions that were vetted, signed, everything was methodically prepared in excess of the minimum number of signatures for a slate of 54 delegates and 54 alternates. And I was there before 8 a.m., the, the time the doors opened, and I was the only Republican finally for President of the United States. Now. We will know, and by the time this airs, we will know if the others got in with a full slate, a few people, or whatever it may be. As we tape this on Wednesday, right. the deadline is Friday the 6th. This, the deadline is Friday the 6th of January, right? So you will be seeing this on the air after it's over. We'll know then. And so, irrespective of what, who, and how many really file, the point is, again, Governor Romney did very well in Iowa has concentrated into New Hampshire, is looking to South Carolina, while simultaneously maintaining the path to say, okay, I'm eventually going to get to March 20, but what are the steps I have to do to get there to be able to play in the sandbox on March 20th? And that meant January 3 through 6, file the petitions. And we look back now what happened in the state of Virginia. Two people that turned in petitions did not qualify. Now, I don't get into legal machinations, but they didn't qualify. Newt Gingrich and, and Rick Perry. Mm -hmm. So they aren't even on the ballot in Virginia. Well, that means there's no way they're going to get those delegates. So that's a part of what you're, again, the kind of person that the organization is driven by is a Mitt Romney style. And I think that's a, a powerful thing. I'd like, you know what, Terry, if I could see that kind of a person in the White House who is as well organized as well strategically thinking forward and where we can be and, and analytical. And then you add to it 
understands the economics and has been dramatically successful in business and knows what it's like it needs to be to create a job and, ha and have a business and that has a feeling of the pride of America and, and to keep it as a strong and a, a, you know, a, a reward society. You work hard to get a reward. It's not a thing like France and Europe where you take some away and give it away to others. That's the kind of guy I want to have in the White House. That's why I'm awfully doggone proud to be the chairman of Mitt Romney's campaign here in the state of Illinois. You know, I, I think it's fair to say you elect a president or try to, to fit the times, to fit the challenge of the moment. Uh, the interesting thing as we look back <clears throat> is how many times we elect somebody and, um, you know, no, no one thought of terrorism in the election of 2000, and yet that was the entirety of George Bush's presidency was in dealing with the Terrorist Act following 9-11. So uh, on other issues, aside from being good uh, maybe it is, as a job creator, which I think people can at least follow that argument from his business background, would Mitt Romney be the kind of guy on foreign affairs and on the other issues that would come before the president that, that he would be good to deal with it? Sure. I mean, you look at what he, I mean, it, it, probably <clears throat> amongst many issues on the global stage today, probably the most concerning is the issue of Iran and where they are with regards to the development of the nuclear positioning and you know, the strait and closing that for the oil there. Strait of Hormuz. Yeah. The Strait of Hormuz. You've got the issue of, of Israel and, and so forth. So, I mean, Mitt Romney has been pretty doggone clear. I mean, I, I, no, let me say it differently. Mitt Romney's been crystal clear with regards to Admitogen and how he would deal with Iran. I don't think there is a question, if you look at that, where he's going to be on that issue. Now, then you go into other areas in regards to China and trade and the evaluation of the yuan and those kind of things. And he's, again, he's put that out there. And it, it, maybe the general public hasn't drilled down in those, but those that have interest in that, um, can, it, it's, it's pretty clear in his book, you know, No Apology. Um, I mean, he's put that out there. So he, where he stands on those international issues is pretty clear. I've read the book and, you know, I've talked to him about it. So I think, I think, him, I think him playing as the leader of the free world uh, out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, again, complemented with his domestic policy in regards to the economy and, and jobs, I think it's going to be a good fit. What, I think it's going to be a good fit with American public needs for 2013 in January when the new White House takes place. You know, people are focused because Barack Obama is going to be the president sure. uh, or the nominee of the Democratic Party, I should say. Uh, they're not having the internal squabbles that are happening within the Republican Party. And the debate is between how conservative a candidate should we have and how do you define conservatism. And I, I would say Mitt Romney is a conservative in economic terms, certainly. Maybe he's uh, perceived to be at least maybe more of a social moderate. I think one of the knocks against him is the certainly the health care thing that's been discussed uh, that he had uh, that's similar to the president's. But I could I could parse those with you though because there are major differences between them. But but I understand where you're going. With this. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to gloss over it just for the sake of brevity <laughs> in some of this. I, I guess the issue would be, or what I'm getting at is a foundation is uh, as we tape this, Michelle Bachman dropped out of the race. Yes. She used to say when she was running, she had a titanium spine. She wasn't going to bend and she wasn't going to uh, be flexible. You're an office holder in Illinois. You know the voters of Illinois. You've been elected statewide. You've held statewide office uh, or uh, elected office for many years in the legislature. Does Mitt Romney fit, or to what extent does he fit, the mindset of Illinois voters? And from your own perspective, do we want people with titanium spines, or does that just lead to not getting anything done because you're not going to compromise over it? Well, you know, a titanium spine line is great for the for the thirty second sound bite or the ten second sound bite, and I, you know I sense what the Illinois voter and this is was your specific question. I think what they're looking for is a leader that is going to get things done, and to actually not lead by public opinion poll. If that's the case, you can strap a couple of monkeys and electrodes there and have people punch them. And they do the way they're supposed to do, and that isn't that isn't governance. You know, I think that. Uh, I don't think that the public of Illinois, and actually for that matter of America, wants to see this bitter schism that's taking place in Washington, D.C. 
you know, the fight between the Democrats and the Republicans. I mean, it's, it's toxic. And sadly said, the Potomac water has splashed here in Springfield. And Springfield, in the General Assembly, has gotten to that temperament to some extent as well. I can only give you an example. In the, Mitt Romney was the governor, a Republican. In Massachusetts, 80% of the General Assembly in Massachusetts are Democrats. And yet, number one, he got elected, and number two, he governed very well. So if you have a titanium spine, you basically have said the line is in the sand and my way or the highway, and nothing will get done. And that doesn't mean you bend and you, you flex to be a Gumby doll for whatever the will of the others may be. You figure out a way to get through the process to get things done. You know, in a sense, I think Ronald Reagan was like that. Now, just a little sidebar history, I bet you didn't know this. In 1980, when he ran for President of the United States, I was the executive director of the state of Illinois for the Ronald Reagan campaign. I did not know that. There you go. And I was, How old were you then? I was 24. I was wow. a young kid. And I remember going to the airport picking Nancy Reagan up and driving her around. And I was on the plane with Ronald Reagan and had his folders and we talked quite a bit. So when I was in the car driving Ann Romney around, I reflected on that and I told her the story. And when Mitt and I were on the plane together, I told him the story. So, you know, it's kind of neat. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll see a repeat of history again here. But Ronald Reagan was a man who was tough, he was solid, but yet he worked very closely. Him and Tip O'Neill had a relationship that was tough and solid, but cordial and worked together. I see Mitt Romney going into a lot of the kind of, same kind of footsteps as Ronald Reagan in the management style. Uh, I, you know, you're also unique uh, relative to the United States in that you know Governor Romney, as you said, but you also know personally Barack Obama. We served together in the Illinois State Senate. Knowing both men, and I don't know how many people know both men very well, uh, how would you compare or contrast them? You know, I, I think that, and I also want to kind of respond to something you said earlier, Terry, about sometimes the, the, the people step up for the times. I think when Barack Obama ran four years ago, he stepped up to the times, and the American public was looking for someone like him, someone that could, could deliver a message and that could um, create energy and cause people to rally and follow him. Barack was, it, it was and is phenomenal at that. And I think America needed that at that time. Um, I don't think, I, you know what, I'm kind of glad Mitt Romney did not win the nomination four years ago. I don't think he could have beat Barack Obama. Um, now, we have seen him in office, and I think that the times of today are not playing towards what President Obama's skill set is. Doesn't mean he's a bad man by any means. I, I like Barack. But his skill set does not deliver what is needed in America today. And then you take now what Mitt Romney has got to offer, and again, economy and jobs. This is what America needs today. They're not looking for a cheerleader that can go out there and you know give them the hope and change. They want someone to be proud of, that they can have a feeling of being a strong, patriotic American and lead, but they want someone to help bring about what's necessary for the economy today. What would you uh, say to those your fellow Republicans who are saying, you know, I, I just, Romney's too uh, liberal for me. You know, give him time. Give him time in that, you know, there's going to be, a, eventually the moment's going to come. And you have to go in there and close that curtain. And you're going to have to make a decision. It'll be between you and your God to do the right thing. And if they don't like where he stands on certain issues because he isn't perfect in their eyes, then you have an option to do one of a couple things. Vote for somebody else. They may not even be on the ballot. We've already seen some of them exit right after Iowa. Um, or stand back and don't vote at all. Or vote for Barack Obama. And relative to Illinois come November of 2012, what are your thoughts on the chances, as we touched on earlier? Most people say, well, Barack Obama is not going to lose Illinois. What are your thoughts uh, this you know, far? I don't out? Want to, I'm not a betting man, so I wouldn't bet the I wouldn't bet a coffee and a donut on it right now. Um, but when you look at the poll numbers in the state of Illinois, Brock is doing extremely well in the city of Chicago. But the rest of the state, you go in the suburban and downstate, his poll numbers are dramatically poor. And from a strategy standpoint, without tipping it all right here on the camera, but from a strategy standpoint, we are going to play the Romney uh, campaign here in Illinois. I mean, there may not be the, the massive amounts of television that you may find in Iowa and some Florida and some of these other states, but it will be important for Governor Romney's bid for the presidency to, to, to be energized and do well for the congressional races that are going to be competitive out there 
and for the House and Senate races are going to be competitive out there. And when you, again, look outside the city of Chicago, there is a real chance, as I move around the state, clear down to the southern part, that the lifting of all boats can help because of Governor Romney's stronger presence in the campaign. It will be challenging to deliver the electoral votes out of Illinois for Governor Romney, and we know that. Um, but that, again, it doesn't mean you shouldn't play hard. Uh, State Treasurer Dan Rutherford, uh, as we go into the spring session, we know it's going to be tough. The legislature will be putting together a budget. Uh, we wanted to focus at this point on the presidential election, given that that's the news of the day, so sure. to speak, and will be. But maybe we can visit with you again and get an update on the state finances and where you see the uh, budget going after the governor releases his budget. I would look forward to that opportunity, Terry. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Don't forget to vote. <laughs> You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.